Are you one of those woodworkers who is always putting out fires? Do you complain that there's just one thing after another? Or say, I'm so disorganized. Yep, I'm busier than a one-armed paper hair. <sighs> I don't know even where to start. Man, I need to get organized. All these phrases inevitably leads to, I'm so not motivated. This is the vicious cycle, my friends. The experts will say that you need a time management strategy. Hi, my name is Roger Kugler. This is Working at Woodworking Podcast, where I hope to help you make money, run your professional woodworking business. And if you're not doing that right now, and you're a skilled hobbyist who's been thinking about maybe doing something on the side, this is your podcast. I'm here to help you turn your woodworking skills into a professional business where you can help members of your community. I mentioned a few episodes ago where I had been working on a new website and I have that up and running and I've added a donate button using Square and it's working really well. You really ought to check that out and if you'd like to throw me a few bucks I would be greatly appreciative of it. And also I want to plant a little seed that if you are a skilled teacher. There are people out there looking for woodworking classes. It has just kind of erupted over the last few weeks, probably since all the schools are getting back in session. But I went pretty much the entire summer with, with no inquiries, and boom, it is just lit up. And my schedule is filling up. So just something to think about. So almost every time management strategy recommends the omnipresent to-do list. No, 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 no! The TDL. Yes, we have lived with to-do list all of our lives. When you were a kid, your mother may have had a to-do list taped to your door. You had to clean your room, feed the dog, water the cat, take out the trash, and if you accomplished all these tasks, you got a gold star, or maybe a trip to the movies, or maybe she'd throw you a buck or two. In high school, you probably had a class on time management. In college, you may have had a class on time management. If you're working in a corporation, you've probably gone through time management training. I bet there is a list, a to-do list on your refrigerator right now of things your spouse wants you to do. You may even have one on the wall of your shop. Or if you're one of the sophisticated type, it's on your cell phone. We all have them. We all use them. Why don't they work? Why do we feel so disorganized, so out of control? Well, I don't think we're using them correctly. How many have heard of the two-minute rule? The two-minute rule states that if a task takes less than two minutes to do, do it. If it takes more than two minutes to do, then you need to either schedule it, delegate it, or don't do it at all. Well, geez, that sounds simple enough. Duh, why didn't I think of that? Well, it's easy to say it's very hard to do, especially if you can't do it within two minutes. You have to schedule it to delegate it or just don't even do it. But how do we handle all of that? A tool that I have found to be very effective, not that I'm an expert at this, mind you, is the Eisenhower Matrix. Now, this is named after President Dwight D. Eisenhower, our 34th president, served between 1953 and 1961. I was born during the Eisenhower administration. History buffs will remember him maybe even more so as the commander-in-chief of the Allied forces during World War II. He was the man responsible for the D-Day invasion. I gave a speech at Northwestern University in 1954 where he said, he was actually quoting the president of the university, but he said that I have two kinds of problems, the urgent and the important. Okay, now let that sink into your sawdust-filled cranium hole for a few minutes. Urgent and important. Okay, got a handle on that? 
He went on to say, the urgent is rarely important and the important are rarely urgent. Yeah, it's going to take me a while to kind of unpack that. But people who study this type of thing go through and kind of give some definitions. One of them is what exactly is urgent? An urgent task is one that often affects someone else. It helps someone else achieve their goals. An important task is one that helps you achieve your goals. That's a really important distinction. Are you doing this because they want you to, or are you doing this because you want to? So this Eisenhower matrix, you've probably seen this diagram before. It's really nothing new, and it's quite popular in the the time management circles. So think of four squares. In the upper left-hand square, that's where we're going to put things that are important and urgent. Next to it, in the upper right-hand square, are things that are not urgent but important. Now on the two bottom squares, lower left-hand, we have the urgent but not important. And on the right-hand bottom square, we have the not urgent and not important. Okay, I'm quite sure that you're thoroughly confused by this. If you send me an email, I'll, I will send you a um, little chart that I made up that I kind of adapted for, for woodworkers. Other charts are more corporate business types. So let's go through this one by one. Urgent tasks are always reactive. This is something that we must do. We have to do now. They're urgent. Examples of things that are urgent and important are chasing those fires that we have to continually put out if we are so totally disorganized. Oh, crap. Quarterly taxes are due. Well, that is important that you do those and you have let it become urgent. Ah, the shop's on fire. Okay, <laughs> that's one that you don't plan for, but it's on fire and you've got to do something right now. Or maybe you have a sick kid and you're the parent that stays home and takes care of sick kids. That's urgent and that is very, very important. So what about things that are urgent but not important? These are things that you do that, well, quite frankly, somebody else could do. Now, this makes it a little difficult, we being solo entrepreneurs. The corporate business Eisenhower Matrix says... This is the box that you delegate. Well, that may be hard for us because we don't have any employees. But what are some of the tasks that we could maybe hire someone to do? Bookkeeping, maybe? Photography? Are you spending 10 hours doing product shoots that you could hire someone else to do like three hours? <laughs> because they're just so much better at it than you are. Or what about cleaning? Oh, yeah, well... I mean, we all enjoy cleaning our shops so much, we wouldn't want to give that up. No. So these are things that are urgent. We need to keep a clean shop, but in the big scheme of things, they're not really important. Somebody else can do that. So consider what you might be able to take off your plate. Okay, let's talk about things that are not urgent, but very important. Not urgent. These are things that are we are being proactive about. We are going to schedule when we pay our quarterly taxes. <gasps> that way it doesn't become a fire that we have to put out. It doesn't become urgent. And honestly, I've been familiar with, I have used the Eisenhower matrix for off and on for, gosh, I don't know, 20, 25, 30 years. But only in researching for this episode did it really dawn on me that the not urgent important is where we need to be spending all of our time. This is normal. This is business. This is where our standard operating procedures function. And if you remember back to episode 22, where we talked about standard operating procedures in your professional woodworking shop, this is where you live. This is where you know what work is coming in. You know what needs to be done. You know that you have to buy materials. You need to buy supplies. You need to actually fix that rocker. You need to build that dining table. You know when it's due, when the customer is expecting it. This is our day-to-day normal operation. This is our happy spot. So what about the lower right hand square? 
Okay, this is kind of a deep hole here because this is not urgent and it is not important. But I guarantee you, you probably spend an inordinate amount of time in the lower right hand square. This is what I've termed the rabbit hole. This is the fun place. This is where you basically waste time when you should be working on Mrs. Smith's rocking chair. But instead, an idea popped into your head. How much would it cost to, and you go off on some tangent, or for some strange reason, just out of the blue, you ask yourself a question. Should I get the Festool ETS sander or the Rotex sander? Hmm, let me go look that up. And you spend the next 45 minutes surfing the web, reading all the kinds of things, dipping into the YouTube black hole to make a decision on something that is 100% theoretical. Yeah, maybe you've been thinking about doing that, but did you really have to do that right then? In the middle of the workday, when Mrs. Smith would really like her rocking chair back. We all do this. I am poster child for the lower right hand square. How do we fix that? How do we keep from getting sucked in? We schedule it. We schedule a time to research Festool ETS versus Rotex. We schedule a time when we determine how much it would cost to build a wood storage shed. Maybe that's really early in the morning before everyone gets up. Maybe that's late at night after everyone's gone to bed. Maybe you're going to do that next Thursday afternoon at 2.30. Now, this is the point where the Eisenhower matrix breaks down. So if you just look at this four squared chart with some words wrapped around it, honestly, it's not going to do any good because the only way we can really make things work is to use a schedule. You can use a schedule as a to-do list, but as one of the time management gurus that I have have read and followed, Carl Pullian says a to-do list is a list of things that, eh, you'll probably not get done. If it's not on a calendar, it's not going to get done. Your to-do list should be on a calendar. When are you going to have Mrs. Smith's rocking chair done? When are you going to order the materials for that dining room table? When are you going to work on building your website? When are you going to work on your social media? A calendar makes a to-do list real. It's easy to have it up there on a to-do list because, eh, if I don't get it done, yeah, no big deal. I'll do it tomorrow. But that calendar, I don't know, there's just something wired in our brain. When we see a list on a calendar, three things that I'm going to do Thursday, that somehow in the brain makes it more real. Now, a lot of people will kind of combine a to-do list and a calendar, and that seems to be very, very effective. You need some way of prioritizing what jobs need to get done today. And Carl Pullian suggests that you decide what you're going to do tomorrow at the end of the workday today. So that when you come in to the shop tomorrow, you know exactly what you need to do. You're not sitting around for 15 minutes drinking coffee or tea trying to figure out, huh, wonder what I should work on today. No, you've already decided that the night before because you were in the thick of it. You didn't get that product done that needs to get shipped today. First thing on the list on the calendar for Thursday is finish product ship. If you use the Eisenhower matrix to make decisions on how you're going to schedule things on the calendar, I think that will be a very, very great help to you. The idea is to try to keep as many things out of the upper left-hand box, the urgent and important. I made my box red because it's like, ah, there really should be nothing scheduled in the red box. Those are things that, that just happens. A water pipe breaks. The switch on your table saw craps out. Those are urgent. They need to be done. They need to be done now. Quarterly taxes should never make it in to the red box. They need to be in the green box 
the not urgent, important, the everyday standard operating procedures that on my calendar on September 15th, quarterly taxes are due. I can see that. It's not a surprise. It's not an emergency. It's not a freak out moment. It's right there. Urgent but not important, the lower left hand box, I made that yellow because it's kind of, you know, caution. If you can get rid of something in here, delegate it, by all means do it. And by delegation, I probably should just rephrase that as hiring that out, letting someone else take care of that. And the most deadly square on here, the lower right, the rabbit hole, the not important, not urgent, I've colored that gray, a dark gray, almost a black, because that's the giant time suck that so many of us fall into. Another way some people will do this is by using a, a numbering system, one through four. Whenever there is a task to do on their to-do list, they ask themselves, is this important and urgent? And if it is, well, that's your number one priority. You know, the shop is on fire. That is important that I put the fire out. If it's important but not urgent, Mr. Jones would like me to build a bookcase. That's very important, but I'm not, not going to do that today. And so that becomes a number two. That becomes part of our standard operating procedure. A number three would be something that's not important and urgent. That's cleaning the shop, doing the bookkeeping. And then, of course, a number four, very, very, very low priority is figuring out if you should buy the ETS or the Rotex from Festool. Those are the, 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 the time sucks. Now, Eisenhower was known for getting a lot of stuff done. He was also known for being a very people person. He could get different factions to work together, even though they didn't want to or didn't like each other. Apparently, he was just a wizard at that. But he was also a scheduler. He planned ahead. In fact, at D-Day, when he was out aboard the command ship, he had two messages in his pocket. In his right-hand pocket, he had a message to President Roosevelt that said, The invasion is underway. We are making good progress. We have secured the beachheads and moving inland, or some such. In his left-hand pocket, he had a message that said, I regret to inform you that our invasion plans have been a failure. The fault of this relies solely upon myself. So he foresaw the need to have something planned out, you know, in something as critical as the invasion of Europe. So, there you go. That's uh, that's one way that you can increase your time management strategy and get more work done. What could possibly go wrong? Well, if you stick around for a few more minutes, we'll dig into that. Now, the, the experts, the psychologists who, who study this, this stuff, you know, the way humans behave in a work environment, will point to projection bias. This causes us to make big mistakes when we feel optimistic, inaccurately projecting that we will continue to feel that way in the future. I kind of simplified this by saying in the moment bias. And this usually identifies itself as buyer's remorse. I can't believe I spent that much money on that tool. What was I thinking? Did I really need to buy that right now? When am I going to use that? Really? This is where your future self doesn't agree with your present self. You impulsed something. You pulled the trigger a little too prematurely. This is something that marketers prey upon. They put the end caps in the grocery stores of all the, the real, you know, yummy stuff, the things that you might not think about when you went to the store, but the bag of chips, you know, the special sauce, those are things that we're just going, ah, eh, yeah, why not? You know, they do this in tool stores, you know, the things like, oh, wow, that's really cool. And boom, you've impulsed it. And then two weeks later, it's like, why did I buy that? That's really kind of stupid. So that can kind of screw up our, our Eisenhower matrix. The other thing that can really kind of sabotage it is what I call the Superman bias or 
the experts call it the optimism bias. This leads us to believe that we are going to be more efficient than we are, so we might take on a task that is too big for us to handle alone. Well, boy, am I glad I have never been guilty of doing this. Some people say that, ha, your eyes are a little bigger than your stomach there, isn't it? Or, don't bite off more than you can chew. Or, my favorite from Roy Underhill, don't bite off more than you can hew. <laughs> Get it, hew? <laughs> sure, I can build the casework for a 4,500 square foot house. No problem. Oh, you need it in four weeks? Yeah, sure, I can do that. Oh, man. I have gotten myself in so much trouble. I mean, literally, you just get so excited about something and you forget about the other 12 people who are stacked up behind this job that you haven't got this done. Sure, I can do that. Need it in a month? Oh, yeah, I can get that done. I am so incredibly guilty of this. And one of the episodes I had mentioned that you've just got to learn to say no. Because if you say yes to someone, you're saying no to one of your customers who's waiting on you to get something done. And going right along with the uh, the, the dark hole, the lower right-hand quadrant, is the restraint bias. I call it the goof-off bias. This causes us to overestimate the level of control we have over our impulse behaviors and underestimate how distracted we might get while trying to complete our to-do list. This is basically saying, yeah, you're going to goof off. You may, you know, think you're putting your nose to the grindstone, but you're going to goof off. You're going to go to the hardware store when you really didn't need to go. Or you might start a podcast when you have so much work to do that you're behind on. Or you might end up watching a stupid YouTube video about a cat in the middle of the day. Yeah, tell me who's not done that, who's a solopreneur. Here's a question for you. Would you fire yourself if you were the boss? Seriously, if you were the boss and you walked into the shop right now and he saw what you're doing, would he fire you? Yeah, that's something we struggle with all the time. Now, just when you think you're out of the woods, here comes Parkinson's Law of Triviality. I'm not making this up. That's the tendency to devote a disproportionate amount of our time to menial and trivial matters while leaving important matters unattended. Now, this goes by another term called bike shedding. I've, I've never heard that before. Yeah, you're tidying up the shop instead of finishing Mrs. Smith's rocking chair. Okay, you're avoiding finishing Mrs. Smith's rocking chair for some reason. Middle of the day, you decide that you really need to clean out the central dust collection system. Not that it didn't need cleaning, but did you actually have to do it right then? Was it scheduled? Nope, I bet it wasn't. Or maybe you're reorganizing your scrap bin. This is kind of the old cliche of, I have to reorganize my sock drawer. Hey, the mind is a weird thing. Sometimes it just needs time. But don't let this control your schedule and your productivity. Okay, so to wrap all this up, if you're feeling overwhelmed, out of control, you need to work on your schedule. Get a handle on it. Get a grip. What has to be done when? Very often, just knowing what you are behind on helps so much. When we feel out of control, we feel anxious, we have anxiety, confusion, we just are almost paralyzed. But if you take a step back and start writing stuff down, start setting priorities, that sense of control comes back and the anxiety goes away and our purpose comes back in and it just makes so many things so much better. Remember the two minute rule. If you can get it done in two minutes, do it. If you can answer that email about the dining room table, do it. If you can take the phone call within two minutes, do it. If you're in the middle of a glue up and you have clamps and glue all over the place, don't answer the frickin' phone. Use the Eisenhower matrix. That helps you make decisions on what is important and what's not important and what priority it should have. Leave room in your schedule for the unexpected. Don't be booked 24-7. If somebody calls up and wants to go out to lunch with you, 
hopefully there's enough room in your schedule that you can say, yeah, I can do that. If every 15 minutes of your day has something assigned to it, who are you working for? (laughs) And of course, we're all human. We make mistakes. We are certainly not infallible. Eisenhower kind of showed us that. He had two messages prepared. Sometimes I I watch the 731 Woodworks channel on YouTube, and the the gentleman had a, a real good episode on, in fact, I think it was motivation. And he had a, a quote in there that we get to do this. We get to go out into the shop. We get to build things. And we really need to appreciate what we get to do. We could be doing other things. There's a lot of professions out there. But for one reason or another, you chose this profession. We get to do this. So don't let that go by the wayside. Appreciate that. Appreciate the blessings that that we all have. Hope this helps. Hope this helps you get her done. Recommendations for this episode, I have a whole list, some of the source material that I use for the the time management strategies. Uh, There's a couple YouTube videos on there. All of that's down in the show notes. Again, if you'd like to email me, I'll send you a copy of the the Woodworkers Eisenhower Matrix that I kind of came up with. Uh, It it could be very, very helpful uh, for you. Miss Jobs had a dining room table request, and I'm I'm not able to take on a dining room table right now. And to be quite honest with you, in my small shop, dining room tables are a real challenge. And so I, I, I respectfully declined. And if you'd like to support the show, remember that I added that new link to the working at woodworking.com website. And of course, you can always buy me a cup of coffee. Special thanks to listeners in Middleburg, Florida and Duisburg, Germany. Until next week, happy woodworking.